So today we will look at three Euclidean sequencers in VC React that I think you should definitely experiment with. And for those of you who are not familiar with what a Euclidean sequencer is, we will go through this as well and you will see that it's much simpler than it sounds and it can be quite fun. So here we have the first sequencer. This one is called Eugene. You can see that it's already running. And in most cases, when we are dealing with Euclidean sequencers, we will have these three controls. So the length of the sequence, the number of hits, and a shift control. And we'll go through each of them. So for now, it will um, trigger a drum module I have here with a hi-hat from doc B. Right, and again, we have the length control that will dictate the length of the overall sequence, similar to how other sequencers work. But then we have also the hits control that will dictate the number of active hits or active gates, if you will, inside this sequence. Now, the magic of the Euclidean sequencer comes from taking this number of hits and placing them as equally as possible across this sequence. So, for example, here we have a 16-step sequence, as you can see here. Right, and let's say that now I will set it to have 8 um, hits, right? Just like this. You can see that we have eight hits placed as equally as possible, in this case, every other step, since we have a 16 step sequence. Right, the same will be when we have four hits, for example. Again, they will be placed as equally as possible, in this case, every four steps. But what happens when we have, for example, five hits? Right, we already get a more interesting rhythm. And just for now, I will add a four on the floor, a kick drums, just so we can have a steady sort of clock I have here. Plets or the macro oscillator too, playing a kick drum. Right, just so we can uh, listen to both rhythms, uh, rhythms together. Right, now this will become even more interesting when we have something like 12 steps instead of 16. Right, so if I take the length down to 12 and still have 5 hits. Right, listen to this rhythm. So again, we can set the length of the sequence and how many active hits or how, ma uh, how many active steps it will have. And the Euclidean sequencer will place these active steps as equally as possible across the sequence. And this is what gives us these um, interesting rhythms that, by the way, we could also get with a normal sequencer. Right here I have another Eugene, Opalach, another Eugene module. It's set with a length of 7 and 4 hits, again placed as evenly as possible on this 7-step sequence. Right, this is sequencing kick all as a bass. I have here my lovely chain here with chorus distortion, right, some delay. Right, you can hear the rhythm of 7-4. Right, so a length of 7 and 4 active hits, again placed as equally as possible across these uh, 7 steps. Right, but I have here also a so-called traditional sequencer, the 8-step sequencer from Count Modula, with the same sequence. So you can also set Euclidean sequences on so-called normal sequencers, right? So if I change this now to the normal sequencer... Right, we have exactly the same rhythm. Right, but of course using a dedicated Euclidean sequencer can give you various results without the need to calculate anything and you can have fun experiment, experimenting with the length and hits values. By the way, there is also a polyphonic version of Eugene. This is called the Polygene. Right, so if you want more sequences from one module, you can use this one. Just keep in mind that you will need a polyphonic clock to set the number of channels. Right here, I'm using the Polymult from Bog Audio set to four channels. So I get four voices or four sequences. 
right? And each of them is set also differently. This will sequence an FM voice with two FM operators that I have here. Right, and you can see I have here a length of 15 and 6 hits. The next one is 10 and 3, then 7, 3, and then 15, 4. So again, you will usually find three values you can control. Here I have another Euclidean sequencer module. This one is from count modular. And also here we have length, right? Again, that will change the overall length of the sequence. We have hits that will set the number of active steps or active hits within this sequence. And the sequencer will place these hits as evenly as possible, giving us a Euclidean rhythm. And also here we have the shift control. So let's really see what this one is doing. Here I have it sequencing a bass. I have dark energy and another sine wave here with some wave shaping, filtering, modulation, delay. To sound like this. Right, so now the shift function will offset the hits or the active steps, so they are placed on different steps of the sequence. They are still placed as evenly as possible, but just shifted to different steps. So here you can see I have a length of 12 with 5 hits, and you can see the sequence here quite clearly. So now let's say that I will shift this by one, and you will see that these two will go one step to the right, as well as all the other steps. Right, as you can see here, right, again, without shifting, and it's just pushing them one step to the right. We will still get the same rhythm, the same hits, but they now just start one step later. Now, in the case of this sequencer, we can also shift them with the step buttons here, or the CV inputs, of course. Right, we have here shift source. If I change this to step, now I can click this and shift them to the left or shift them to the right, right? And we can also use the end of cycle for this, right? We have here two more modes, the end of cycle mode. So with each cycle, they will be shifted either to the left or to the right. Right, so again, like this, we can add more movement and variation. Another feature of this specific sequencer is the ability to sequence CV as well. Right, here I have another one sequencing kick all, in this case length of 15 with 5 hits, and kick all is going through some delay. Right, it will sound like this. But now in the right click menu of the sequencer, I can add the CV expander. Right, and you can see it's running together with the hits, right? So I can use this, for example, to control pitch. I will take this down, the scale down to one, so we have one octave, and then I will send this through a quantizer. Right, and then we have a Euclidean sequence, or so Euclidean rhythm, but also with pitch changes. Right, and we can add even more expanders. So, for example, uh, expanders. So, we can add another one for, for example, the decay. Right, and change the values a bit. Right, something like this, and we can add even another one for the shape. Right, so you can add multiple expanders that will run together, together with the Euclidean rhythm here. something like this. Right, and again, we can get interesting results also with the shift control. Here I have two similar voices, right, two Euclidean sequencers with a length of 24 and uh, 13 hits. They are both sequencing an FM operator with the same exact CV sequence for pitch, but as you can see, one of them is always shifting 
they are panned hard left and hard right, so we get this nice texture between them. Here is another sequencer you might want to explore, this one can do much much more than just Euclidean rhythms. But also here we have the three parameters, so we have length, in this case it's called steps, we have hits, in this case it's called beats, and we have shift, that in this case it's called offset, and here we have also accents, which can also be quite interesting, and of course we have four channels that we can use. The voice that I have here is the classic VCO going through a filter, there is also some delay involved, Right, so I will use the beats or the hits from the first channel, right, to trigger or to gate this voice through the opera, through the envelope. Right, so now again we can change the length of the sequence, so let's go with 13 or 13 steps. Right, and then let's have 5 beats or 5 active steps that will be spread again as evenly as possible and this will give us the Euclidean rhythm. Right, and then again we can add also accents, right, and they will also be spread in a Euclidean algorithm. So if I add for example 2 accents, you see we have 5 so the length of five steps, because we have five hits, right? And then we have two active accents within it, and you can see we have this step and this step with accents. And I can use this to affect the filter even further. I have here another envelope that I can use. So the accent will gate this envelope. Right, and then we have sorts of accents, again they will be also spread as evenly as possible across the number of beats in this case. And again we have four channels, so we can also use this, I have here four key call modules from the FACO, they are each tuned to a different note. Right, and I have here four sequences set right on the sequencer, so each of them is getting a different Euclidean sequence with accents also, right, it will sound like this. Right, so this can also be quite interesting, I'm mixing this, this is going through a filter. By the way, this sequencer is also scenes that you can save and then uh, recall with an external signal, right? You have different scenes that you can save different sequences, and here in this case I'm using the ADDR sequencer to sequence this, and you can see the sequences change. Right, so you can add even more variation with this. In this case it's sequencing the Tremor FM as a sort of a kick drum, I guess. Right, with the changing Euclidean rhythm. And here I have also, just for fun, some uh, ratcheting hi-hat with our gate from Bog Audio, and again another drum module from Doc B. And that's it, all three sequencers can do so so much more and there are other Euclidean sequencers out there to explore also in hardware of course. I hope this video was somewhat helpful, thank you for watching, cheers.